Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is the Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. Hi there, welcome along to the Racing Post Weekend Football Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington, and joining me to look ahead to the first batch of matches in the Premier League for the new season are James Milton and Ian Wilkerson from the Racing Post Football Desk, and also from Paddy Power, one of their Wizards of Oz. We've got Jason Murphy. Okay, so what have we got on the show? We've got five live Premier League games to go through. We'll do the other five Premier League games as well. The lads will go down into the divisions for their best bets. And we'll start off with the six questions. Yep, the format is the same old hackneyed nonsense we've been doing for years. The lads have two questions each and then get to answer the one they wish they'd been answered. So we'll kick off with the questions. And James Milton, my question for you is, what have you learned from the first weekend of Championship and Football League action? I've learned that the, uh, Lincoln are going to go really well, which I did, I did think beforehand, but they won, a, won away at Northampton, who were relegated from League One. And you just feel the setup they've got there. Uh, they, they are, are primed to, to continue their, their terrific rise through the division. Excellent. OK, so Lincoln will win League Two. Uh, Wilco, which pundit, commentator, presenter or analyst are you most looking forward to seeing again? Who, who have you it's missed? It's the return of Jamie Carragher. Jamie Carragher, yeah, that's He's a good back. Yeah, I saw he, he was, um, bad, I saw him on um, they, uh, Sky were doing their um, pretty good um, Premier League preview and there he was. He's back. It's like signing a new pundit. It, it is. It's like, yeah, like... When Lamella came back yeah. from his injury. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So, yeah, Jamie, I like Jamie. He's forthright, to the point. Good. It's great to see him back. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Uh, Jason, your first question. Who will, which player will be the best new arrival in the Premier League this year? So when we look back, when in May we reflect on the season that's about to start, who will be the player that makes the most impact? Yeah, there's a lot of talk about Naby Keita, what he's going to bring to Liverpool. A lot of energy, a lot of drive. Um, and he's one of the few signings, apart from Alisson in the goal, that could actually improve that Liverpool team. Um, so the boys in the office here are tipping him up as well for a uh, player of the season. So I think he'll be one to watch. Really? Oh, what sort of price is Cater? Um, I'll put it out for you there if you give us a few minutes. OK, well, first of all, we'll do Milts' next question, which is, what's your best bet for the new Premier League season? Um, my best bet is actually for Huddersfield to be the lowest scoring team in the division. Um, I think they're second favourites to, to Cardiff, 100 to 30. Um, and, and you just feel, I mean, they, they, they stayed up brilliantly last season, but, you know, all the work was done early on. And they're massively run out of steam. They scored 28 goals all season. That was the lowest, from, along with Swansea, and three in their last 10 games of the season. Um, so I, I, I suspect that, that they will struggle all season long, and I just don't see them having enough, enough attacking quality. That sounds like a good bet. I've, I've had so many bets and looked at every single angle, but I didn't realise there was a, a lowest scoring team. So I'll have to add that one to the portfolio. What time is uh, what price is this fella for the Golden Boot then, Jason? Uh, for player of the year, you get year, him. Even. Yeah, there's 16s out there. He was bigger when the market opened up, um, but yeah, you'll get 16 still on him there. That'll be fifth in the list. Uh, the Bruyne is probably the market favourite. Then you have Salah there is at 10s. Hazard if he's still at Chelsea, which looks likely, you get about 12 to one. And you've Harry Kane there from 11 to one, 14s with some. What price, Wolf? You, won't uh, have, if you surely won't have to scroll too far. <laughs> yeah, if he goes to Chelsea, he could be one to keep an eye on. Never mind that. <laughs> um, he's actually not listed here at the uh, moment, well, so they were just waiting get, on that transfer to go through. No, it's not going through, OK? <laughs> Don't say that. I'm, I'm sure he's staying. Wilco, out of the top six in the Premier League, who is going to be the biggest disappointment? Manchester United, I think. Um, I'd, the top two, I would imagine, are going to be um, Liverpool and Manchester City. Not many concerns, but it's a process of elimination, really. Um, I'm quite upbeat about how Arsenal are going to do this year. I think a, few, a change of management, breath of fresh air there. I think they'll do quite well. Spurs, not alarmed about no transfer activity. I think United, so just, there's no, I just don't think there's any system. Their, their recruitment seems to be puzzling in their strategy of just sort of like chasing after players. You can't imagine them under Alex Ferguson trying to buy Harry Maguire at twice the price he would oh. be based on a couple of good performances oh, no. at the World Cup. The, the whole Maguire. ethos, the whole yeah, ethos I mean, seems to have um, gone there. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'd, I'm, I saw Mark Langdon put them up not to finish in the top four in the pullout. And um, I'd agree with that. I, I can't see them doing much at all this year. OK, and Jason Murphy, who wins the golden boot? Who's going to be top scorer? 
Oh, it's a good question. I think Salah has overperformed last season and he's definitely going to regress. So I'd be looking at Mane and Firmino. I think there's value in both of them, especially each way. Harry Kane, favourite, rightly so. Um, Aguero, though, if he gets the game time, if he doesn't get injured or pick up stupid red cards, I think Aguero is definitely a good bet there. And um, you get Matt, which is 15 to 2 with us, which is a very good price. It's amazing, isn't it? He's scored 200 goals for City now, Aguero. Been here for ages, but probably, Jason, sl still slightly, I wouldn't say underrated, but maybe underappreciated. Would you go along with that? Yeah, I think last year, <clears throat> I mean, look at his record, but last year was the first time he made the Premier League team of the year, which is just mind-boggling considering yeah. what, he, what he's done, you know. I think I heard a great stat there. I think Phil Foden was 11 years of age when Aguero scored his first goal for City. That is incredible. Uh, incredible. Yeah, so. give, us a, give us a quick blast of golden boot prices, actually, Jason. Yeah, so Harry Kane, um, <clears throat> we're 3-1 uh, there on him at the moment. Mo Salah you can get at 13-2. Uh, Aubameyang, 6-1, to one. he has been backed uh, in the last couple of weeks and did very well at Arsenal at the end of last season. Aguero then with 15-2, to two. you Lukaku there at 8-1, to one. then Jesus at 14-1 to one if, he, if he can get in ahead of Aguero, and then Lacazette's at 25s, Firmino 25s, uh, and then 33 the rest. And remind me, Jason, who's your team? Uh, Man United. Man United, OK. Sure. What, the ones that Ian just said they're going to have a rubbish yeah, season? Yeah, that's right. James, which of those questions would you like to take? Um, I'm, I'm going to put the boot in on, on poor old Jason again and, and say, yeah, Manchester United disappointing the top six. I think you look at it, you know, last season, kind of Manchester City and, and Liverpool just, just played some, some terrific stuff. I don't, I've, I've been saying it for a couple of seasons, actually. I just think Mourinho's rather grim uh, <laughs> attitude to life and to football is, is looking increasingly outdated. And, um, and, and, and you know, they they just they, uh, at times last season you were expecting them to kind of you know click into gear, but I, I don't feel they they've looked any anywhere near a, a cohesive unit uh, by the end of the season than, than they were at the start. Are you uh, pessimistic as well, Jason? I mean, it hasn't really been a, a stellar summer so far, has it? Mourinho's whinging away like mad, isn't he? What do you make of it all? Yeah, I think. We have a better squad than we had this time last year. Like we got Sanchez there in January, and Fred is going to be a decent sign. I think, all right, Liverpool and City are going to be hard to catch, and there is a bit of jealousy when you look at the new managers coming in and the football that they play. Like Sarri's going to be quite direct attacking football, whereas you you know United are probably the team out of the top six that are probably not going to be the best to watch. But that doesn't always way. matter, though, does it? As you yeah, say, there's it. more than one way to skin a cat. I mean, is there still uh, exactly uh, the question I was going to ask you? Is this is there still a place for that kind of Mourinho-style football? Can it still be effective? I think it can. I think it can. Uh, Lukaku got his goals last year. Um, Sanchez, we didn't see the best of him, so he's going to be an improvement as well. And I think, you know, Chelsea are going to, it's going to take Sarri a while to get Chelsea playing the football that he wants. Spurs are possibly going to have a World Cup hangover as well. So, you know, you'd have a chance there to, you know, get into the top four and stay in the top four come the end of the season. Um, I'd actually, I don't think they're going to finish outside the top four, Mourinho. It will guarantee that at least, and hopefully in the Champions League they might get a bit of a run in that as well. OK, Wilco, which question are you going to answer? Um, I'll have the best bet, please. Go on. Um, Kevin De Bruyne, player of the year. Manchester City, head and shoulders above everybody else. He's their best player. I think he's a rightful favourite. He was about 17-2, um, to two, I think. And um, there's been a bit of money for him because he was double figures before the pullout came out. But um, I think it makes sense. He was very unlucky to uh, not to win it last year with Salah, you know, Producing in the last third of the season, around the time well when the voting, voting exactly. Um, in it, don't you? De Bruyne is a class act. If he stays fit, he's going to be their best player. So I, I'd have him down as player of the year. And Jason, what's your answer? Um, I was happy enough to answer the United one there, but again, okay. we are a bit jealous looking at all the managers around the league. And end of last season, we had an FA Cup and Liverpool had a Champions League final. If you had a chance, a choice between winning an FA Cup, which we didn't in the end, or losing a Champions League final, we'd rather be in the Champions League final. To be honest. Um, but yeah, I won't be down, downbeat like Lukaku said, Mourinho isn't that downbeat when he's talking to the players either, so it could be just another <coughs> Mourinho master plan. Well, there was a journalist on San this week that he thinks this is all just some absolutely massive great facade and that you know the team spirit's superb and they're all going to come out firing and prove everyone wrong. But uh, it, he'd have to go to acting lessons to, to pull this one off. I mean, this, this, <laughs> this miserable monologue has been going on for months, hasn't it? OK, well, that segues us nicely into the first of our five... Premier League previews, the Friday night game, 8pm, Man United versus Leicester. It's on Sky Sports and how do Paddy Power bet? 
Yeah, so Man United, we have a 4-9. to nine. You can get Leicester at 13-2 to two and the draw 16-5. to five. Wilco, what do you make of this one? Tough opener for United. Um, Leicester played, uh, um, played at um, Arsenal on the first night last year in one of these Friday night games and gave them a real fright. It was a real blockbuster game, 4-3, I think it ended. And I, I think that they'll, um, they'll see this as an opportunity to uh, get at United, even though they, United had a great home record last year. They only conceded nine goals. But... Um, United actually scored more away goals than United did last year. I mean, only Chelsea, Spurs, Liverpool and City scored more than them. Both teams have scored in 12 of their last 15 aways. I'd expect a positive approach from the Foxes. So uh, both teams to score 11 to 10 for me. Milt's fast start is really important for United this season because Chelsea and Arsenal under new management, Tottenham, you know, they uh, had had so many players in the, in the, in the, the World Cup semi-finals. But I, uh, I don't see them getting it against, against Leicester and kind of 9-2 to two draw no bet Leicester. Uh, I, I think it's worth a small, uh, small investment. I mean, Leicester uh, away from home last season, they did compete well with the, um, with the big guns. I mean, they, look, they suffered a lot of narrow defeats, that 4-3 at Arsenal, 5-4 at Tottenham on the, on the final day when they, when they led 3-1. They went down 2-1 at uh, Anfield, again led, uh, led very early on there. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, I think they've got a lot about them still. And, and United, I just feel, um, you know, they're, they're, they're still struggling to take the game to teams uh, who, who come to Old Trafford, particularly teams like Leicester, who have a, a bit of a threat on the break. OK, the boys are very down about your lads, uh, Jason. Are you going to put them straight or are you going to row in on the uh, Manchester misery? Yeah, well, the, the market agrees. Cause United went off 1-3 to three, uh, against Leicester last season and got the win as well. 4-9 to nine now. To me, I think there's a small bit of value in it. I think, you know, the optimism might be there, but like I say, United have a better squad than last season. Leicester have lost Mares, which is a big loss, but they've made some good signings in Madison from Norwich. Uh, Johnny Evans as well is a good addition too. Uh, I think the both teams to score, though, is a good angle. Uh, Leicester topped it last season in the both teams to score 24 of their 38 matches. Now, United did come second from bottom with it only clicking in 14 of 38 of their matches. But if you combine that, that means with these two teams, it occurred in 50% of their matches. So 11 to 10 odd, odds against seems like a good bet, especially when you consider Vardy's record against uh, the top six as well. If you look from August 2014 to February 2018, uh, Vardy scored 23 goals in 43 matches against the top six. And he was the first player ever last season to score against all top six teams in the same campaign. So you could get Vardy there at 8-1, first goal score, 3-1 any time if, if that's how you want to play play this match if you're feeling down on United. Uh, but for me, I, I think United at 4-9 is OK. And I think Sanchez, 92, if he does start up top, um, there's definitely value in that 92. I tell you, if anyone comes out with a better stat than uh, Jason's Vardy stat there in this postcast. I will be very delighted. Great work, Jason. That was excellent. Now then, great work, Barry Rattigan. If you are Barry Rattigan, you've won yourself a £100 free bet from Paddy Power by entering our competition in last week's postcast. Well done, mate. We will be in touch with your winnings. Well, I won't, but someone else will. <laughs> Stay tuned for more great chances to win free bets with Paddy Power throughout the season. Success ain't earned, it's bought. That's why at Paddy Power, we paid the big bucks for the best tech nerds in the world to develop our new fastest ever app. Download the new app from the App Store or Play Store now. 18 plus, be gambleaware.org. Welcome back. We've got one, two live games on Saturday in the Premier League, starting at 12.30 at St James's, Newcastle versus Tottenham. First of all, Newcastle have uh, refused to do any media. And you know that green screen stuff where the players kind of that swagger up to the camera and then put their hands behind their back or make like a rifle shape or something. They haven't done that, so that presumably that's going to be that's going to uh, stymie the old graphics for for this game. Absolutely no relevance to betting, but it might make life slightly easy, uh, slightly difficult for Sky. In actual fact, it might have some reference to betting because it does show that morale isn't great at Newcastle mm. apparently. So, before the boys give us their views on the game, let's get the latest betting from Paddy Power. Yeah, so Newcastle eleven to four, uh, Tottenham evens, and the draw twelve to five. Right then, James Milton, what do you make of this one? Yeah, I mean, as you, you mentioned, Newcastle's uh, uh, troubles behind the scene. Possibly, it looks like a good time to play them, but it's also a good time to play Tottenham. So it's um, it's, it's, a, it's, they, a, it's a good time to play them. <laughs> it Derby. is, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm looking at under two and a half goals in this one. I mean, last season Spurs won the uh, the, the two league games one nil and two nil. And you just feel that they've had so many players to reach the uh, the the, uh, the last four and onwards in the in the um, 
uh, in the World Cup that you know they are going to struggle to make a fast start in the league. Having said that, I mean Newcastle are just. I mean, they struggled for attacking quality last season. Um, I mentioned that Huddersfield are, are, are a good bet to be the lowest scorers, but the 16 to 1 about Newcastle um, is, is interesting as well. They've brought in Rondon, they've lost Mitrovic and Gale. I'm not, you know, I don't think that's a, a, a great upgrade for them, but, you know, particularly the way Mitrovic was playing for Fulham last season. Um, so, yeah, I think it's, it's going to be a, a cagey one, and, and, you know, certainly listen out for for, for uh, a few dissenting voices in the crowd at St James's. OK, a boring one, under two and a half for Milts. Uh, can your boys get off to a flying start, Wilco? Well, it's going to be difficult for them because so many of their players only got back to training on Monday. So, so who out? Because, I mean, Tottenham, for all that everyone complains, or that some of their fans complain, they haven't really done much in the transfer market. You yes. could pretty much name their 11 now. Yeah. So how many of that 11 would you actually expect to be starting here? I should think Laurie's probably won't play in goal. Don't, you don't have to go through them all. I no. mean, are we looking at five or eight or ten? Well, three or four, probably. Okay. Um, and so, um, I mean, it's always very difficult and, you know, it's going to be a game where you're looking at team news, even though I'm not a big team news punter, I always think it's overemphasised and people don't, you know, they don't ever underestimate team changes, so it's always factored into the prices for me. So um, it's going to be quite a tough game, I think. Um, Newcastle, obviously, they've got their problems and um, they were, you know, it seemed their world hit the floor when they lost 4-0 to Braga in a friendly the other week. and. Benitez was back on his um, doing his Mourinho act. Oh, I think he's entitled to. I don't think Jose is, but I think Rafa's entitled. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's too and the good for that lot anyway, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, and the difficulty is that he's got a chairman. He don't really care about whether his people have got the ump or not. No, I mean, that's right. We've seen that in all his business. Not, not a popularity just contest. Is he's within. not bothered. Oh. But um, th- I mean, they Newcastle did produce, and they had their problems at home last year. But they produced some decent results at, at home. I mean, I know Arsenal were not the greatest travellers towards the back end of the Wenger era. So, um, but they beat them. They beat Chelsea. Can we have Chelsea, a bet, Wilco, and They please. beat United. You've got this massive great I was monologue. Assuming, and um, I would think that this could be a difficult game for Spurs. So, a draw at 12-5. to 5. A draw. Jason, where do you stand on team news? Wilco thinks it's overplayed. What do you think? Um, no, it definitely does have an effect when it comes in. Like, you're, like obviously, when you're looking at the prices, you know, three or four days out, you are looking at team news, who's back in training, who isn't, who might be injured. Um, so I think it is known in advance, barring you know something happens in the warm up. Um, it is kind of known in advance and factored into the price. Okay, and with that in mind, who do you fancy, Newcastle, Tottenham? Yeah, I think uh, Benitez did a good job there last season. Um, but like, just echo what the boys are saying. Transfer business hasn't been good. Like Mitrovic and Gale for me would have got goals. I don't see how Muto or Rondon are an improvement on that or Perez that had there already. Uh, Spurs no transfer business as of yet. Um, but I'm not concerned about that. It's interesting to see how the new stadium will go for them. But they went off 5-6 to six last season, got a 2-0 result here. Um, even with all the players only coming back this week, such as Kane and Deli Alli, Pochettino said he is going to consider them. Um, and I think evens on Spurs is, is a great bet, to be honest. Uh, Eriksen will start and got 10 goals last season, and I think he's a great show. First goal score, 17-2 was out there, 3-1 to one any time. And yeah, I think Spurs will, will hit the ground running with that. OK, brilliant. 5.30, it's Wolverhampton Wanderers who were so swashbuckling and impressive in winning the championship last year. They are receiving Everton. It's on BT Sport. What's the latest betting here, Ian? Oh, sorry, Jason, even. Uh, yeah, we go Wolves 13-10, to Everton 94 and the draw 21-10. to You can go first, Jason. Yeah, um, I think Wolves were very impressive last year in coming up. Um, these boys both played Spanish opposition in friendlies during the week. Uh, two good teams in Valencia and Villarreal. Uh, Wolves got a 2-1 win. Everton lost 3-2. But if you look at the teams that start, I think Everton on paper still have the better team. Uh, Wolves have brought in this Jimenez from Benfica. 31 goals and 120 appearances. It's not a great record. Um, Everton... And I'm doing this in air quotes when I say they've lost Rooney, Klassen and Williams. I think there's no no major loss with them going out. I think Richardson and Digne are good signings. Uh, Richardson, you know, played his best football under Silva at Hull last season, or sorry, at Watford at the start of last season. Uh, to me, the prices look about right. Uh, so the way I'd be playing this is I probably I'd be looking at the draw at 21 to 10. I think Pickford. I don't rate him as a keeper. I know your perception might be different after the World Cup, but he's made five errors leading the goals in 69 Premier League games. So if you look at Simon Mignolet, who's played 
245 games in Premier League. He's made 18 errors. You do the maths, and that's coming out at 7.24% errors, more or less identical at these boys. That's the level Pickford, in my eyes, is at. And I think Ruben Neves got six goals from outside the box in Championship last season. So I think, I know Pickford made that save against Colombia, an unbelievable save, but I think Ruben Neves, when it's priced up, to score from outside the box, if there was 14 or 16 to 1 going on that, I think it's worth a bet as well. Oh, I love that. Great stuff. Um, James Milton, where do you see Wolves this season? I mean, obviously, you know, they were the kind of poster boys in the Championship last year. They won it convincingly, but are they that much better than the other teams that have come up? I mean, I, th- I think I think this season you're looking at Wolves and Fulham as as two outstanding Championship teams, and and we saw last season the three promoted teams all stayed up, and I think Wolves and Fulham are, are both uh, quite significantly stronger than than those three. So I think both of them should be should be aiming for 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 kind of you know top half top twelve finishes. Certainly, you look at the betting. I mean, Wolves are very short to finish top half. Um, so Fulham might be might be the better value there, but but yeah, I, I'm quite sweet on Wolves in this opening game actually. Um, yeah, I think they're a bit more settled than than Everton. Everton's still rebuilding after that ludicrous uh, spending spree last season, which which went so badly wrong, and obviously a new manager. And just looking at Wolves' uh, results at home last season in the Championship, uh, when when you know there were a lot of big clubs in that division last season, they lost at home to Cardiff. They won their other eight against the rest of the top ten, and and they kept clean sheets in in seven of those. So you know they've they've got a lot of flair players in midfield and whatever, but they're very strong at the back as well. And I think I think yeah, a home win looks a, a decent bet here. It's a real cracking game this one, Wilco. Yeah, it? an interesting yeah. test. What do you think? Will yeah, happen? I mean Wolves are going to be interesting all season, aren't they? They're the intriguing um, they're the intriguing story in the Premier League this year. I think how their uh, their model is um, going to adapt to uh, top flight football. I, I'm like James, I like them in this game as well. Mainly because I think um, Silver's got quite a lot of work to do at Everton and I don't know whether it will be an instant success. They won that pre-season game 22-0 but apart from that they've not had a good summer and um, their away form's really got to improve. They only beat Newcastle, Stoke and Huddersfield on the road last year. Wolves, 16 of their last 21 home games last year, they scored at least two goals. I think they'll hit the ground running. So just a, a neat Wolves win for the pair of you, yeah? Yep. OK, let's rattle through the other five non-televised games on Saturday. I'll read out the Paddy Power prices. Other prices are obviously available out there. And you boys will tell us what's going to happen. We will start with Bournemouth versus Cardiff. It's 10 to 11 Bournemouth, 3 to 1 Cardiff, 12 to 5 to draw. James Milton? I'm going for Bournemouth 2-1 in this one. I'm not mad about either team's chances this season, but um, Bournemouth did win five, uh, beat five of, of the, uh, the bottom six at home last time. And they're, they're going to need to be ruthless because their defence gets shown up against better teams. Wilco? Both teams to score, 9-10. to 10. Cardiff got to go for it. They're really up against it to stay up. This is the sort of game that they've got to get something from. If they, it's almost a six-pointer on the opening day. Um, Bournemouth defence, they've conceded 60 goals in the last three seasons. Bit shaky. Both teams to score. And Jason? Yeah, Eddie Hall is doing a fine job. This is Bournemouth's fourth season in the Premier League. Um, Cardiff are going to struggle. Uh, even in the Championship last season, they only averaged 116 passes per game. That was bottom of the league. Whereas you look at Man City, averaging 666 passes per game. So, you know, City will top the Premiership and Cardiff are going to finish bottom of it. And they're going to start off with a loss. I think Bournemouth are, are just that bit more experienced than 10 to 11. Sounds good to me. 13 to 10, Fulham to return to the Premier League in style with a win over Palace, who are 21 to 10. It's 11 to 5 to draw. Ian Wilkerson. Um, yeah, overs for me in this one. I think it'll be a good game. Um, Palace have scored um, in 10 of their last 11 away matches and uh, Fulham are going to be an exciting team to watch. Yeah, looking forward to seeing more assessing you and I think Sherl is an excellent signing. Uh, Jason? Yeah, um, I think the prices look about right in this. Um, I think Fulham have done some very good bu- business. Uh, we all know about Sherl, uh, Moss and, and Mitrovic, but um, just reading about Surrey as well that they've got from Nice, this looks like a quality midfielder they're after bringing in there too. Palace, it all depends on, on Zaha, really. We've added him in there uh, for player of the year, 40 to 1 as well, if you're interested. I am. Uh, we'll be half in that if he goes to Chelsea. Um, but I think the draw, uh, open a day draw here, 23 to 10. Milts? Um, both teams to score, yeah, I think it's going to be a great game. Fulham, have, as we've mentioned, some exciting attacking signings. And, and Palace have actually scored in 20 of their last 23 Premier League games. So, um, yeah. It's the handicap decider. <laughs> um, now, next up, Huddersfield Town 5-1 to one to stun Chelsea, who are 4-7, to seven, and Paddy Pago 11-4 the draw. Jason Murphy, who wins this? 
Yeah, uh, I think Chelsea, you know, it's terrible what Sarri's come into there. There's a bit of turmoil. Is Courtois going to go? It uh, looks likely. I think um, Hazard's only back. He played 20 minutes there the other night. Uh, so I think Huddersfield bet United at home last season. They lost late at home to Man City, so they do have a performance in them. So maybe Huddersfield plus one at LMT8 with, with Chelsea still getting their house in order. Yeah, Courtois not a big problem. I mean, they've sussed some fellow who's only going to cost them 20, 72 million quid. <laughs> but with Caballero starts, though, that's, oh, you know, yeah. you talk about team news changing prices. Well, yeah, quite, absolutely. Milts, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I expect Huddersfield to struggle long term, but, uh, you know, you'd rather be playing them away in kind of March or April than, than when they're buzzing on the opening day. And, and you know, as we said, Chelsea very unsettled. So uh, I'm going for Huddersfield or draw double chance in this one. Wilkes? Not mad on Huddersfield, really. They don't score enough goals at home for me. Uh, nine of their 14 home, last 14 home games were unders. 2-0 win to Chelsea at 6-1. Watford play Brighton. It's 5-4 to four the Orns. It's 23-10 to 10 Brighton. It's 21-10 to 10 the draw. Ian Wilkerson, who wins this? It's going to be a draw. I can't get much enthusiasm for this game, really. Not got big... Um, optimism about either side. I'm a big fan of Chris Hewton, but apart from that, Watford, they're going to have a difficult season. Lack of quality, both teams. Draw. Jason, short price this one for last game on match of the day, I should imagine. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, Chris Hewton, he's done a great job. Newcastle, Norwich, Birmingham. Now with Brighton, he is just a quality manager. I think uh, Brighton have done the better transfer business as well. They brought in Yakim Bakish, if I'm pronouncing that correct, from Eze Alkmaar, 21 goals and 33 appearances. Uh, played with Iran the World Cup as well. Um, if he starts, um, I think have a look at him there for nine to one, maybe ten to one first goal score, or just keep an eye out if you know he could be, you know, it could be next week before he gets his debut. Um, but I think for this match, I'd be looking at Brighton draw no bet at about five to four. I think is a decent price. And Milts. Um, I'm actually quite keen on Watford. I think Brighton have, have got a few injury doubts, and the the, the Iranian lad, as Paul Merson might say, is a, is a doubt. Um, and they they picked up only 11 of their 40 points away from home last season. I think they'll stay up, but I'm, I'm very towards Watford for this one. Sunday games and weekend naps coming up next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of ten pounds or more across any sport in a week, and you'll get a free ten pound bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Welcome back, Bruce Millington, James Milton, Ian Wilkerson and Paddy Powers, Jason Murphy, looking ahead to two live Premier League games on Sunday, and they are crackers. Sometimes the fixture list gives you a fairly insipid set of first-day fixtures, but we've got some real good ones today. 1.30, Liverpool versus West Ham. Liverpool, there's a real positive vibe about them. If Man United have had a kind of slightly morose uh, pre-season. There's real momentum behind Liverpool and the belief that they are going to be the big challengers to Man City for the title this year. What price are they to start their campaign with three points, Jason? Yeah, uh, so we have Liverpool 2-9, to nine, we have West Ham 11-1 to one, and the draw 5-1. to one. And Wilco, are Liverpool good things here? Um, yeah, probably, but I mean that's reflected in the prices. It's very, I think it's going to be quite difficult for us to, if you're, if you're um, positive about Liverpool, to find them at a backable price, particularly when they're playing at home this year, because some of the prices are very short. Um, I would go um, two or more Liverpool goals in the second half. Perhaps I'm quite quite positive about West Ham this year. I think um, they've finally got a really good manager who can be able to steady the ship if the uh, boardroom let him. Uh, get on with the opportunity to do that. A couple of good sign-ins. I think um, they could do pretty well. So 11 to 10, Liverpool to score two or more second-half goals. OK. And what about you, Jason? Yeah, um, when I looked at these prices initially, I thought West Ham were a bit big, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought the Liverpool price is right. I mean, they were beaten at home last season. They've improved their squad, like we've mentioned earlier. Um, West Ham defensively had the worst record in the league last year, 68 goals conceded, the same as Stoke. Pellegrini's a very good manager, he's made some good signings, but I'm not sure if he's sorted out that defence yet. Fabianski is a good keeper though. Liverpool have had a decent pre-season, uh, spanked Napoli there 5-0 last week, and in their last two friendly games, the front three of Mane, Salah and Firmino have started, so expect them to start as well. Um, I think Salah is too short in the goal score markets and will be for a couple of weeks so the resolve is going to be valued there and Firmino 4-1 to one, Mane 9-2 I think over 3.5 goals is 6-5 to five, but if we're getting over 3.5 goals is Liverpool are going to win it so Liverpool and over 3.5 goals at 6-4 to four is, is what I'd be looking at What league position will West Ham finish in this season Jason? It's a very good question um, they've been well backed in all those top half top six and even top four markets with us um, so they're they're probably the next best out of the top six, depending on, on your opinion on everything and Wolves. 
OK, so you think you could finish seventh. Right then, mm. uh, what do you make of this game, James? Yeah, I like, uh, like, like the business that both of these clubs have done, actually. Um, uh, I think Liverpool, um, uh, I, th I think the uh, over three and a half goals is a pretty solid bet in this one. I mean, Liverpool is, as Jason mentioned, uh, kind of less affected than a lot of the big teams by the World Cup. Mane, Salah and Firmino, all, all likely to be ready to start for the first game. They scored three or more goals in 17 of their league games last season. Uh, and, and yeah, West Ham have added some some uh, quality in midfield and 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 uh, in forward positions. But yeah, I think their defence will still struggle. Uh, Liverpool won both both games against them four one last season. So yeah, should be plenty of entertainment. So over three and a half. Over three and a half for me. Yeah. Okay, the Wenger out mob have had their say. You'll have seen James Milton with a kebab in his hand, mouthing off, effing and jeffing on Arsenal TV. You've got your wish. Wenger's gone, we've got a new start, a new manager, will he take them to the next level? What better way to start your campaign than a home game against Man City? Nice and easy. How do Paddy Power bet on this one, Jason? Yeah, so you can have Arsenal at 12 to 5, Man City 10 to 11, and the draw 13 to 5. I will have Man City at 10 to 11, but I'll see what the boys think. We'll start with you, Guna James. Um, yeah, I'm inclined <laughs> to agree with you, actually. I mean, it is a, I, I think long term, I'm, I'm f quite positive about the, uh, the, the Amory appointment. And, you know, he's obviously uh, looking to, to, um, to bring in players to, to make Arsenal less of a soft touch. Um, the problem is that, you know, he's already got a, got a kind of injury crisis in defence. Koscielny's obviously a, a long-term absentee. He's got two left-backs, Kolasinac and Monreal, who are, who are injured as well. And, you know, you don't want to be having those kind of problems. When, when Manchester City come to town, they played three times last season, these sides, and uh, City won by an aggregate score of 9-1. So um, I, I actually like the look of City to be leading at half-time. I think it's, it's just a huge change of football and culture for Arsenal. There are going to be teething problems. I, I, I hope they'll be patient uh, with him. Give, What's give the main him, style change? 22 years or... or well, he's, he's not, give, not giving it away on your own penalty box? Or um, kind of controversial, controversial things like that. <laughs> Having a keeper who can stop the ball, uh, things like that. Um, but I, I think there's, there's going to be more of that fancy pressing going on. And um, uh, he's brought in uh, Torero, the uh, kind of young Uruguayan midfielder who's a, a bit of a hard nut and, and great energy in midfield which Arsenal have been lacking. I mean, Jack is a, a kind of languid ball player uh, who, who, who people wanted to be the destructive midfielder. That didn't really work out. El Elneny's uh, just a, a very limited footballer. Um, so it'll be, be interesting to see. But yeah, I mean, City went ahead inside 20 minutes all three games against Arsenal last season. I think they may well make another fast start, unfortunately. Wilco, the Tottenham fan, will you be exercising schadenfreunder as you watch Arsenal getting stuffed here, do you think? Always. <laughs> no, I'm not really like that. Um, I think it's going to be, um, I think it's a really intriguing game and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a cracking Sunday. Um, Arsenal, uh, James has highlighted their defensive problems. But up front, I think they're looking really sharp this year. I like Lacazette. Big fan of Aubameyang. I think he's going to have a massive season. He's the boot bet. I, I think so Out as well. Yeah, I seven to one. one yeah. yeah, I think I agree. I think he's going to have a really big campaign, and um, they'll cause City problems. But um, Manchester City are obviously the team to beat. So the way to go, I'd go with this is rather than back in City. I think over one and a half first half goals at five to four. I think it could be a lively start. And um, with both games, both teams going for it early on, and um, wouldn't surprise me if there are a couple of goals in the first half. Okay, and Jason, what's your best bet for this game? Yeah, um, optimistic about Arsenal. Like the boys, they have made good signings there, and characters as well. Like Torreira is very good. Um, like Steiner as well, Swiss captain, and coming from Juventus as well, that that environment there. Uh, but yeah, very unlucky to get City in the first game. Uh, Mares is a good signing. He's an improvement. Mendy coming back as well is like a new signing. I think Mahrez got 12 goals and that was playing for Leicester like last year. He got 17 the year they won it. So I think 7-1 to for him to score first is a good bet and he's 66 in the top goal scorer market. But uh, the same as yourself, Bruce, I think Man City 10-11 to is, is a very good bet. Well, we've got one more game to go, of course. Southampton-Burnley, that takes place at 1.30 on Sunday. 4-5 to five Southampton, 12-5 to five Burnley. 7-2, to two, no, 12-5 to five the draw, 7-2 to two Burnley. Very quickly, lads. Uh, I'd be tempted by Burnley DNB, a bit more battle-hardened after their Europa League. And Southampton, poor last season, and haven't added a great deal in the transfer market. Well, yeah. Southampton, three clean sheets at home all last season. Burnley, been playing in Europe, up and running, 7-2, yeah, I'll take a punt on that. And Jason? Yeah, I'd be back in the draw. Goal's a big issue for Southampton, only 37 last season, and Tadic is gone as well. Uh, Burnley playing in Turkey, so there's a bit of travelling there for them, so I think a draw is probably a good bet there, 12-5. to five. Yeah, I should be looking to oppose Southampton a fair bit. 
until we get to Christmas. Uh, okay then, let's get the naps. This will not be beaten. We got off to a fantastic start last week. Three out of three. So let's no see pressure, if we can <laughs> let's see if we can keep the run going. I'm going first because I was going to go last week. I was going to go Derby, but then Dan had that. Then I was going to go Preston, and um, and someone else had that. So I ended up not doing anything. So I'm going to go first this time. Over two and a half in Fulham v Palace at evens is a massive price. James Milton. I'm going for Mansfield to win at Yeovil in League Two. Um, 24 points separated these teams last season. Mansfield really impressive opening result, beat Newport 3-0. And Yeovil had two men sent off, then conceded an 89th minute uh, goal to, to lose at Bury. So not the ideal start for them. And uh, I think Mansfield are a real promotion contenders. Wilco, both teams to score. Bournemouth v Cardiff. Fired up Neil Warnock against a dodgy Cherries defence. OK, and Jason? Yeah, uh, looking at Ipswich, uh, they drew two all with Blackburn last week. They went off at 94, which seemed a bit too big. Um, they're playing Rotterham away this weekend, but they're not as bad as Rotterham, who were spanked by Brentford. Uh, so Paul Hurst is the manager, and he's also brought in two of his best players from Shrewsbury from last season, and John Nolan and, and Stoll and Sia. So I think Ipswich draw no bet at 6-5 to five, uh, would be the nap that we'd be given from here. Thank you very much, chaps. Excellent stuff. Well done. Don't forget, if you do enjoy the postcasts, please make sure you rate, review and subscribe wherever you are listening to us. We've just done a fantastic USPGA postcast. Steve Palmer is in good form there, so do give that a listen. Maddie's back for the Friday Racing Weekend preview. Join her as well. We're back next week. Thanks very much for joining us. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is The Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym.